Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial on configuring an intelligent chatbot project using Angular and .NET. Whether you're following along on Udemy or watching on YouTube, I'm thrilled to guide you through this process. This code will be made available on my Udemy course, ASP.NET Core, MVC, C Sharp, Angular, and EF Crash Course. I'm currently updating the material from this course since it is outdated. I wanted the code to be made available before I finish completing the lecture series. And this walkthrough will allow you to be able to configure different parts of the application before I demonstrate each section throughout the lecture series. In today's video, we'll be configuring the .NET API service, setting up Entity Framework Core, integrating OpenAI, and configuring the Angular application. I also have a PDF document of the different parts of the application that you need to modify so that you can get the application up and running. Each of these items will be made clearer once I finish the lecture series, but I wanted you to have the code available before that is completed. So let's go ahead and look at this application. This is the .NET Core API service. As you look through the application, you have your controllers. You have the authentication controller, which is what we use to authenticate a user logging into the application. We have a conversation controller that gets all the conversations that are saved back to our database. We are using SQL Server in conjunction with our EF Core process. This is currently in a database called devwebtuts underscore chat GPT. It has the tables here created in our model section. So right here you have our migrations, you have the models associated with our objects. Every time we save an item and call the chat GPT API, each of those are stored inside of our database. So I could show you an example of conversations made here, and you can see the question, the open AI answer, and the title given in each of them. This will be clearer once we actually see the application run. The users table stores the specific users in our application. So you can see the different users in our application here. Let's configure the first item in our application. If you go to the open AI folder, you will see something here that says open AI service. At the top here, you see an open AI URL, which is the API endpoint that you need to call, but then you have a secret key, which is blurred here for security reasons. You need to create your own secret key. So how do you do that? First thing you need to do is go to platform.openai.com. You need to go to your personal and view API keys. And you can see here, you can create a new secret API key, give it a name. So I'm in this one, I'm gonna just put test and then copy that. You can use that in your application. So for reasons, I'm gonna actually delete it now. But this is what you will copy and paste into that field. The second part you have to deal with is your database connection. So I recommend everybody download SQL Server if they can. If you don't have a Windows operating system, you can also get a cloud database version of SQL Server pretty cheap. My remote hosting is actually running in HostGator, which gives me a SQL Server database. We are using SQL Server in conjunction with Entity Framework Core. I would recommend SQL Server to be able to follow through, but if you don't want to use SQL Server, you can use another database management system. So you'll need to go into your app settings. You'll see that this is blurred out, but then you'll need to put your default connection where the default connection string is. Usually you can store this in a separate service to encrypt it and call it within the application. But for now, put that default connection string there. Once you have those two items in place, then you'll be able to spin off the application and run it. Before you do that, there are two commands you'll need to run. .NET EF migrations add initial create and .NET EF database update. What that will do is create an EF migration history. This table, I'll just select these so you can kind of see. There's one initial create and it creates both of these tables according to the model structure which is here. So you see user, you have ID, username, password, hash, salt. You have conversation, which is right there. And then when we go into our database context, we are actually creating that set. And then we're setting a initializers if you want to have some data in there first. 
that's how we create our tables in our SQL Server database. So now that we have all that running, let's actually run the API service. This is running locally on my machine. You can see it's running on HTTPS, localhost, port 7055. Let's go ahead and click that. You can see that there. So 404 because it's not actually being called. That is our API service to get it up and running. Now for our Angular application, since they are separated, we have our Angular app that's sitting right here. So the first thing you need to do is you need to run in the terminal npm install. That will get all of the different modules installed on your device. Once you have that in place, you also need to look at some routes here. So my .NET Core application is running on localhost 7055. That's the port. If yours does not build on that, one thing you can do when it runs is go into properties and see launch settings. You can see in my HTTP, HTTPS, I try to go to 7055 to start it. And the reason we do that is that the integration parts of this application points to the local host. Now, of course, when you deploy the application, you're going to have to change that URL to point to a server. Let's go back to our Angular application. And I want to show you some of the parts that need to change where the URL points. We have a service here. You see that localhost 7055 API path. If the API application is on a different port, not running local, you'll need to change those URLs. You can also see in other parts of this. You can also see throughout the application, you want to look for anywhere there is a URL to modify where the service is being called. Once you've set up the correct URL for your API endpoint, then let's go ahead and run this application. So we can just put ng serve, and this should run on localhost 4200. So right now we have a login. You also have a register if you don't have an account. So once you do your migration with Entity Framework, register an account, then you'll be able to log in. So I already have accounts created in this process. One other thing I forgot to tell you is that in my application, in the program.cs in the API service, I've allowed the course policy for localhost. You'll want to enable this for whatever port your Angular application is running. When it's pushed to a server and you actually deploy this, you want to allow that origin to change. This is to put some security in the browser so that they cannot make a call without having this origin allowed. So make sure you change that course policy to whatever local host port is running your Angular application or when it's deployed, the remote URL. So once that's in place, let's go ahead and actually run this application. So I have an account. Log in. And you can see I have questions on the side here. If you want to log out, you can. They'll take you back into the login page. Let's go ahead and implement a chat in this process. Now, some of these fields can be modified. You can see, like I put tone of voice here, put authoritative, casual, cheerful, formal, professional. You can modify these. Also, profession, I put some professions in there. You can add to this or remove professions if you don't want to use it. But let's go ahead and say, So I'm saying I want to know what the Dow Jones stock market will be in the next two years. More likely than not, it will not give you an answer based on that since the learning model is from September 2021. But let's go ahead and see what we get. Then I'm going to select the profession. In this case, I am going to put financial analyst. I want the tone to be informative. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to have this title, which is going to populate in questions here. I'm going to have the search query through. I'm going to click send, which is going to make an API call to open AI's API service. So let me click send. You can see that it's loading. So as this loads, 
it will spit back out the data called from the service. You see it's typing similar to what you get in ChatGPT. And you can see the answers. You can see some of the results are based on its learning model. I'm going to let this finish typing out. You can see that on the left here, it populated where the other questions were. So I asked what Shiba Inu's price would, prediction would be, Bitcoin's price. This is populated on the side. So then I can clear that data out and then it clears out there. Now let's say I want to dig into that specific one. You can see that it gives it an ID which it generates in the database. So if I go here to conversations, what do I get? I get ID 12, gives user ID, user record ID, which relates to the user, gives the question, gives the answer, gives the title that I was given it. Now there's some massaging of that prompt in the application itself. So if I go back here, and if you see this, I put the prompt, you're an expert content developer. So I pass back the system message, user message here, which then makes a call in the open API controller. So whatever my profession is, I'm saying you are that profession with over 30 years experience. I then put in the user message, not the system message, what the question is. And then I say, remove jargon correct misspelling words and grammar, vary the length of sentences to make the text more interesting, write an easier read paragraph, write in that voice, which we put was informative, avoid plagiarism, each section clearly and concisely, avoid AI detectors. Once that gets generated and spits back out, this gets saved into the database in the conversations table. Then in the Angular application, that data in the search component gets sent back and we're setting a timeout to then push each character so that it types slowly on the page, which is on the search HTML page. This is where you can modify the dropdowns as well to the professions and the tone of voice. So that's our answer. Now, one thing you can do is if you don't want this in your historical data, you can delete it. That is removed. And then from the database. So once we finish chatting, getting all the different items we want, we can always log out here, and then we're back to the login screen. Once you're done, you can press Control C, close out the API. Same thing with our Angular app, so that it's not running. And that's our ChatGPT like chatbot using .NET Core and Angular. Throughout the course, I will explain each section of code more thoroughly so that you understand each intricate part of this application. Thank you very much. Have a good one.